Hello, boys, girls, and hello, MPs, and welcome back to the judgiest place on the internet. My name's Josh. My name's Erica. And my name's Christian. And we are the, the Judges. Judges. Does my voice sound extra good today? Always. Is my am I am I loud? A little bit. In my I mean, ears. I mean, you want me to turn you down a little bit in your ears? I haven't. I'll let you both down. Hello. I can turn us oh, down a, a tiny bit. I, I feel like he's still loud. I feel like I feel that's like I was coming voice. in hotter through the headphones than I was in my own head, and it felt weird. I mean, I didn't. I didn't adjust your volume at all. I so. did. I threw you for a loop. How about that? We're fine. I'm just fixing it now. Hey, it's not my episode to edit, so I'm going to take my time with it. Fug. It's all cut. Fug. Hello, and welcome back to the judgiest place on the internet. My name's Rick. My name's Christian. And I'm the other one, and we are... Oh, sorry. And we are the, the Judges. And this is an Erica episode. That's right. Really, they're all Eric episodes if you think about it. Hit that other one. Good one, Joshua. If yeah. You really think about it. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, we do have reviews. That's right. If you go to apple.co slash judges, link in the description, leave us a review. It really helps the show out. We're bringing them back. We're bringing it back. And Didn't we bring it back like, I don't know, two months ago? And then we forgot about it. Now and it's back Now we're again. bringing it back again. Okay. Where it's an oft brought back segment where we do this. Getting old. Two Ooh. stars out of five. Ooh. You guys ready for some criticism? That one hurts the worst. Um, I'm really not. Two is really an interesting star amount. I used to really love this podcast. Uh oh. But now I find myself fast forwarding through most of it. Just don't listen then. What parts? How do you fast forward just listen at two times speed all the time? Josh, not all of our brains are broken like yours. It's just not as funny or original oh, no. or fun to listen to oh, anymore. Oh, no. This is just how life goes, buddy. The ads make me want to cut my ears off with a poop knife. Hmm. Hey. How are you going to make a reference to the show in a criticism? It shows that they were a real fan at one point. Yeah. And like you could just pay a dollar a month and get ad-free episodes on, on our Patreon. That is true. And then you never have to listen to them. And we still get money. Yeah. So, hmm. The banter isn't really that funny anymore, especially when it's super forced and adds nothing to the story. And the constant cutting the reader off during a story was funny the first time, but got old quick. The mumbling, like, what is that? You're literally on a podcast. Why are you mumbling on purpose? Am I the only one mumbling? No, I think we all mumble. Okay. I've never mumbled a day in my life. It's a royal mumble where we all sort of mumble and then we see who's the last man standing. Hmm. Good one, Joshua. The fan no, no. fiction is unbearable. That was a great joke. A royal rumble, a royal mumble. Oh, I didn't get it. Yeah. Cerebral. The fan fiction is unbearable. Okay, we've read those like three thrice. Times. Yeah. yeah. Maybe force. Mm. That one felt forced, you're right. Maybe the banter is forced. Oh, no. Fuck. But just like Star Wars, this force... Has awakened. There's literally thousands of stories on Reddit, and they always end up reading the same ones as redacted podcast. What do you mean? We they only read the best ones out of the thousands of them on Reddit. It's not like the other nine hundred of them are just dog shit all the time, or just about terrible things that just bring down the mood so incredibly that you can't even make a joke about it. What? Also, when the other when other podcasts read like ten an episode. Yeah. And we read four. There's a pretty good chance that one of those four or a couple might be on the same one. But we also, also read listener submissions. Also, we were first. That is true. We were at first. And we so it doesn't first. really matter. So, um, Joshua. Yeah. You've made like seven bad puns. When? <sighs> like ever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is like a running count. Right? Anyway, what I was going to say is I want to throw my carrot at you, but I feel like it's too early in the episode. Perfect. Now, there, here's a five-star review. This is what we want to hear. So go on and leave no, five-star Bring star me a four-star. Let me get a little... Let no, me get acclimated. We don't want four-stars. I love this podcast. Hey. Me too. I frequently listen, especially now with work from home. 
I tend to go a little stir crazy. This okay. helps my anxiety being alone, and I love it. I also have a, become a frequent user of the soundboard feature in my personal Discord calls, <laughs> and my friends are over the shenanigans. We love it. Hey, it's never too much soundboard. But as they say, if that man will shenan once, he will shenan again. Now that's a real review. The other one didn't matter to me because it wasn't praise. Okay. So it doesn't even affect your brain. Yeah. It, it bounces right off. Only of good stuff. I honestly can't remember the criticism. Uh, they said that. They said that, cool. that uh, you're ugly and you smell bad. <laughs> I mumbled. Yeah. But we don't just mumble on this podcast. We also open mail on this <gasps> podcast. And that's when people send us mail. The P.O. Box 58, Ottawa, Illinois, 61350. That's right, because we have fans that do stuff like send us mail, write fan fiction, sort of buy into the whole essence of the podcast and us as people and not just here to read reddit stories that you could just go on reddit for and sometimes we get mail from Chaz. Chaz. oh no it's our egos it's our eagles it's our eagles <laughs> handle them with care fragile is what you're supposed to read my but eagles you didn't not, show it to the frame so my the, the, eagles my <laughs> eagles not fragile can you mumble a little louder <laughs> there is so much packaging. Fragile is handled with care is what the package says. It actually says, says fragile. It says that there's a total of two, but I only see one box here, so... A total of two, a top and a bottom. You little fricker. Okay. We got a mug. But what's on the mug? Oh. <laughs> Piss, 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 pissing in heaven. <laughs> oh, it's a little cat. <laughs> piss, piss, pissing on heaven's door. I really hope this isn't a dead cat. Like it's somebody's actual cat? Yeah. All right. More uh, fragile stickers. Okay. And then, hold on. Ricky, would you like to read the notes? Sure. Ooh, two. Dear judges. That's us. But really, Christian. That's, that's me. Spelled X T I A N. Hey, that's a cool way to do it. Okay. My boyfriend's cat couldn't shit. They took her to the vet and gave her the enema of her life. Over the weekend, we nursed her and I cleaned evacuated bowel, spelled bowl, but we knew what you meant, <laughs> off her in the bath and force fed her water. So she died two days later on Valentine's Day. Ooh. I pulled up with sandwiches and a shovel to bury that poor sweet little bitch. Well, in my grief, don't help you bury a cat. In my grieving, I have commissioned some items in her memory. The bit Christian does on the pod uh, resonate the most with us. And I used to call piss, 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 piss to the cat. Piss, 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 piss. Please accept this mug in her humorous honor. R.I.P. Italy. R.I.P. Italy, a real one. P.S. I sent the dick to bomb audio. Whoa. Whoa. XOXO Gossip Girl, aka Chaz. Go piss girl. And then we got a piss, a PSS. <laughs> is it PSS or is it PPS? PSS. Okay, but PS stands for postscript. Piss, 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 So piss, then piss. that would be postscript script instead of post postscript. Mm. I'm judging you, Chaz. Did we miss something here or did I not? Was I looking at the mug too long? P.S. says, she died of liver failure. I didn't drown her. <laughs> Nobody thought you drowned It was an accident. Nobody um, thought you drowned her. <laughs> what? It was an accident. Got an enema, uh, cleaned bowels off of her in the bath, and force-fed her water. <laughs> oh, force-fed okay. her water. My... Nobody <laughs> thought that you drowned your boyfriend's cat. Oh, my God. And then we also got drink water. <laughs> Don't force a cat oh to drink God, water. Chaz. And then fragile, handle with care. Oh man, Chaz. <laughs> that was a whole ride. I enjoyed it. There's ups and downs to be sure. <laughs> there was definitely ups and downs. We I'm, don't just give memorials to dead cats on this podcast, though. We also podcast on this podcast. So RIP Italy. Is going on. P Italy. Going online and finding silly little stories, and sometimes Erica's the one doing that. Joshua, it's been brought to my attention that something is your fault and your fault alone. A lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. What is this it? This one specifically. Yeah. I started my period today. <laughs> <laughs> 
not yay. No, that's not, that's not boo anymore. <laughs> not <That's> yay. <laughs> absolutely freaking manifested. Period, <laughs> dude. Insane. Seven years. You broke the streak. Well, and I'm having a bad fucking time. How was the sex though? Period sex. That's why I said it. Okay. Well, I started this morning, so there hasn't been any yet, and there probably won't be because I'm in a really pissy mood. You know it'll help you out. Not Lay sex. Lay down a red towel. That way, it doesn't show the stains, and go to Pound Town. You don't talk about my wife like no. that. No, thank you. Pound Town is the new bakery that opened up. No, they sell it's not. Pound cake. Get some cake. Come Get back. Some cake. That way, you don't get crumbs in the bed. Yeah. With the towel. The red velvet pound cake. <laughs> red velvet pound that way you don't get stains. <laughs> the worst euphemism for sex. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> now that you know that she's pissed. Let me put my carrot cake in your red velvet pound cake. Let me put my carrot cake in your red velvet pound cake. Editor, editor, we can cut that one out. Editor, leave it in twice. <laughs> twice? <laughs> Um, let me find my first story. Do you guys want updates of the Colts draft pick to, picks no. live as they're happening? No, I, I, would, I really don't. I mean, I'd be fine. We can vamp with it since Erica's looking for this story. This is from r slash confessions. Cornerback Juju Brents. Woo! Confessions. Now, is this a little bit of tinkering? You draft confessions and now you're... Now you're, picking confessions. now you're picking confessions. My farts sound like a seal clapping. Okay. Okay. That's epic. The art or the both. <laughs> I got sick of have uh, well I got sick of having dry poo dangling up my butthole hairs. <laughs> and my wife told me it was a turn off looking at them when we did 69er. <laughs> I do think we need to just take a, a quick second. <laughs> Six, do 69er? Yeah. What? We're like, do do 69 Why do you have dingleberries? <laughs> mm -hmm. Some people have really, you are a hairless man. I am a hairless man. I'm, I don't have that much hair, but some people have real hairy ass. I just, and they haven't gotten a tushy bidet yet. I love my tushy. I also love your tushy. <laughs> so I started using hair removal cream in my ass. Oh. Ah! Now here's my issue. I absolutely love the clean feeling, but it does seriously weird shit to my farts. They've gone from sounding like a broken French horn to okay. sounding like someone's blowing bubbles in custard or two bits of meat slapping together. I mean, that's kind of, that's essentially what is that's making exactly. a fart. Uh, the worst thing is, the bubbles seem to get oh, trapped, no. and I need to wiggle my ass cheeks to release them. This happens to me sometimes. Yeah, I've, had to, I've had to do a shimmy to release a bubble. Do you ever have the bubble forward? No, balls stop it, though. You've never had a- I mean, balls stop it. But does it, like, it stops tickle balls. your balls? You go, whoa. You've never- Huh. I guess I wouldn't describe it as tickled. Okay. Caresses. Um, I do feel like we have to go back a second, because you just said a fart- the fact that his fart sounds like meat slapping together is because it is meat slapping together. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, I feel like that normally isn't the noise of a fart, right? It's Hank, not normally the meat slapping Somebody together. made a video on TikTok that Hank Green stitched. and Because some, somebody was like, it's if you sit and like spread your butt cheeks when you sit down and then you fart, then it won't make a noise because your butt cheeks aren't touching. And then Hank Green was like, no, it's your asshole that's making the noise. Okay, mm. thank God. Because I was like, no way, we're just now learning that farts are like snaps. Like, you know a snap? <laughs> the snap is the noise down here. You <laughs> think it's your fingers, but it's it's the meat hitting each other. And if you tell me that a fart is the same as a snap. Yeah, if you really think about it, talking my, is just meat hitting each other when your lips. Go. We're going to have to end the podcast. <laughs> we need to stop now. Yeah, this is bad. We're treading into bad One out of five here. stars. They wouldn't stop talking about meat hitting each other. We're gonna get taken out by. This is not interesting banter. We need to get back to the story. Sometimes I can do a little oh. fart, and I can still feel the trapped bubble hours later if I don't release it. How? How are you? 
one, how does your fart have enough pressure behind it to hold a bubble for that long? There's going to be a slow leak. There's always going to be a slow leak. There's going to be a slow leak. After a while, my brain plays tricks, and it feels like a nugget of shit. No, it probably is. What's really (laughs) off-putting is when I do a big fart, and rather than blasting out straight, it sneaks its way out from the top of my ass crack or from the most forward-facing part of my ass crack, tickling my balls, ha- ball hairs on its way out. Okay, put some cream on your ball hairs. I'm hoping as it starts to grow out, I'll get my trusty old fart sounds back. Well, so he's, he's never get your fart already back. recommitting to never nair his derriere again. It doesn't say you that. got it there. Maybe... Maybe he just likes it to be slightly hairy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then what? Right? You gotta keep it like razored. <laughs> I just feel like <clears throat> then your butt cheeks are getting velcroed together. We need to go back to the root of the problem. It's not the. No, it doesn't. Would if you... you just let your hair grow out to a, a medium sized length, your butt cheeks are gonna get velcroed together <laughs> by the short hair. No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what are you saying? Okay, I get well, my butthole waxed every fucking four weeks. Doesn't sound like you got enough time for medium Maybe, length hair to get grown back and ingr- yeah. velcroing your butt cheeks together. Maybe one side start putting like four curls hair, like shampoo and stuff, and then the other side do straight hair, and then you'll get, get the a hook. nice, nice hook and loop. Yeah. I think we can go back to the root of the problem here. The problem here, I feel like he focused on the fart sounds. It really should not be affecting you that negatively. Fart. Different fart sounds is a better alternative than having shit all over your ass and having your wife have to avoid it while doing a six. What did they say? Uh, doing, doing the sixty nine er. Doing the sixty nine er. Also, I don't think you should ever be able to do the sixty nine er if you fucking call it doing the sixty nine er. Yeah, agreed. That is a fair. You need fair to point you make. completely change your way of life if you frequently have dingleberries. Oh, yeah. for sure. That was my biggest issue with this. Um, not so much that. You know, he he narrowed his butthole and is having issues with fart sounds, uh, but that he had an issue with uh, poo tangling up his butthole hairs to begin with. Um, fucking wash your ass, buddy. Yeah. I mean, seriously, just get it a bidet because I feel like most most uh, dang, uh, dangly poos will come from improper wiping techniques. Yeah. So the bidet will help a ton. Well, even if you don't have a bidet, don't have any intentions of getting a bidet, um, you can still wash your ass. You still could do that. That's you can still of, wash your ass. A lot of work, though. Uh, the top comment on this is, I'm blocking you. And I think that's very funny. Did and he say his age? No. And that was sent to me by Meg on Instagram. Thanks, Meg. Thanks, Meg. Do you know um, the panic I had trying to empathize with this man thinking if a fart went up the top of my butt crack and the way that it would hit the hairs on the back of my neck and send a shiver down my spine like if you're wearing like maybe like a flowy shirt gets up yeah. there yeah i just have a really long butt crack i guess is what i was trying to get yeah, at. yeah. i got gotcha. you i don't wear flowy shirts josh you're currently wearing a pretty loose shirt flowy though <laughs> this one was yeah. sent to me by robin Robin. We love Robin. Off submitter. Hey, tell Batman what's up for me. (laughs) I like how long it took you to decide which button to push. Gotta make sure. (laughs) Yeah. Should have hit that one to begin with. I pressured my 25 female boyfriend, 26 male, into a threesome to flaunt him to my friend, 25 female. Now I'm losing him. I saw this. I don't remember if I saw it on Entourage or if I saw it in the email. Uh, this is in r slash relationship underscore advice. I do have to say this is a pretty wild game plan you had here. I think I saw this on Entourage. We've been together with my female 24 boyfriend. Mm, you said female 25 earlier. Boyfriend <gasps> 25 male and you said 26 mm, for one and a half years. Although not as long, I've been I've had other relationships before. I f- skipped the part where they said English is not my first language because I didn't think it was going to be that bad. But oopsies, here we are. Let's hope it gets better. Uh, he is absolutely the best person I've ever been with in every regard. He's the person I really want to spend my life with, but I'm not sure if he will be on board anymore, and I'm the only one to blame. He is great in the bedroom. Absolutely my best partner ever. 
I couldn't even imagine sex could be this good before meeting him. It's like he has absolute control of himself and certain knowledge of what I need. I was initially very weirded out by him asking questions and making me talk about how I felt during sex, but he took them all he took them all in and worked his magic on me constantly. True I had scientist. many firsts with him. First 69er. I have three friends that I'm very close with. We are a group of four girls and we all call each other our best friends. We routinely meet and pretty much talk about anything. Here's where I messed up. I told them about our sex and how incredible it is. They thought I was bragging and they didn't believe me, especially one of them. Let's call her M name. Meanie. A book. Marjorie. Nope, that's my grandma's name. Everything's your grandma's name. You have so many grandmas. Oh, Meredith. M's. Nope, that's my grandma's name. No, it isn't. Maureen. Michelle. All right, Michelle. Uh, so in the heat of the moment, I said, let's, I'll let her experience it herself. I asked my boyfriend if he would like to have a threesome with, with Michelle. He declined immediately and told me he didn't think it was a good idea. He asked if I was bi and if I was attracted to Michelle. I said, no. I told him I thought it would be fun and pressured him to agree. It's always good to pressure your partner. A wonderful to pressure something even you don't want. Several days later, we met with Michelle in our apartment, and it happened. That's where my insecurities begin. I knew Michelle was working out and looking after herself, but wasn't aware of how good she looked. She had the perfect body. I initially participated, then stood by to let my boyfriend work his magic on her. For the next hour, I watched them have sex have what I would describe as the best sex I've ever seen. It was gut-wrenching, and I felt worse and worse as time went by. An hour is a long time to watch your partner have sex with someone. Yeah. 15 minutes, understandable. An hour? That's a, that's a feature-length film. At the end, I put my best act on and tried to look happy. Michelle stayed over and left the next morning. My boyfriend asked how I felt about it, and he told me that he would have preferred me participating more. I said I thought it was great and convinced him that I had a lot of fun. God, this is... Erica, I love your nails, by the way. Thank you. The following week, Michelle asked to come over again. Oh, no. It went pretty much the same way. Mm. Then a couple of days later, again, Michelle let my boyfriend do things that we never do. He's a very considerate person, and he never tries to do those things knowing I'm neither comfortable with nor turned on by them. This brings us... To last night. Oh, no. Michelle came over again without even asking first. I don't know how around like round five or it's, just like. It's really good sex. No, I'm super, I'm super cool with this. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to stay in the corner for the next hour. You need snacks or anything? She was a little drunk, jumped over onto my boyfriend. He looked at me trying to understand what he should do. I don't know why, but I, sh- I showed them the bedroom and they went. This time I stayed at the living room and didn't go in with them. They left the door open and I heard everything. I tried really hard not to intervene and not to cry. Their chemistry is obvious. I'm lost. I dearly love my boyfriend, but I'm losing him. I know it's all my fault. How should I approach my boyfriend and or Michelle to bring up how I feel about it all? (laughs) I think you just have a conversation. I I mean, it's toast at this point. I could ask him if he has feelings for her. Maybe I should ask him to stop immediately. I'm so ashamed of this since I pushed him to do it. I also should probably talk with Michelle about how jealous I am. Jealous of what? And I'm even more ashamed of that. I can't think straight right now, and I am known to make destructive decisions when I'm emotionally vulnerable. There is no one I can talk to about this. I might not be able to log in for several hours. Apologize if I don't answer your questions. I think she was making destructive decisions before she was emotionally so, vulnerable. Could you imagine sitting in the living room hearing your partner have sex, typing this on Reddit? It was like, I am a wreck. Yeah. <laughs> what a bad decision to make. How do you not bring it up like the first or two times maybe it's like, okay, no, this, I'm still not into this. And, and you're just like, yeah, no, let's just keep this going. It's going to get better. As much of this is a her fault, uh, there's a little bit of the guy's fault. Because unless she's like the best actor ever, there's no way you can be like, are you sure? 
<laughs> everybody knows the partner yeah. has a tone where it's like are you okay and it's like yeah and it's like okay clearly something's not okay here yeah but unless she's just fucking Catherine Zeta jones just like everything is great and he's like all right you said it <laughs> god are you ready for the update there's an update it's a heartbreaker oh no Right after I read through the advice on my original post, I immediately acted. I took the day off to gather my thoughts until my boyfriend came home. I took notes on how to approach and what to say him, say to him. As soon as he entered through the door, I asked if we could talk. I probably looked a mess, and he immediately realized how serious it was. He sat on the couch and waited with a worried face. I said I was very nervous about this and ashamed of what I was going to tell him, and I wanted him to listen to the end before saying or doing anything. Even before telling him what the problem was, I told him this was all my fault, he did nothing wrong, and I hoped that he could forgive me. I could tell he was very worried by that. Then I said I loved him very much, and for the first time in our relationship, I expressed my desire to spend the rest of my life with him if he thinks likewise. I went on about how great I thought he was in every aspect, including sex, and came clean with how I discussed these that with my friends and how I specifically arranged the threesome to show him off to Michelle. I told him that I hated it and I was too ashamed and lost to stop it. I said I knew what I did was wrong and dishonest and to please forgive me. I was crying by then. I told him I realized Michelle was way better than me and they did, did things that I didn't want to do. And that anal. their chemistry is obvious. It must be. It's got to be anal. Probably. <laughs> what's the uh, What's the thing? <laughs> but also, that feels like so much preparation, and like, to be doing that. In the, I, he's got a whole hour, I guess. <laughs> you got to do something to fill the time. <laughs> I told him I would understand if he didn't want to continue with me. Although I hoped he would forgive me, and that I was the only one to blame. When maybe, I maybe if you want to do this. May I suggest videos of you and your partner <laughs> instead of letting somebody else fuck your boyfriend? <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, especially if you're like not attracted to them. Like, yeah. it's not really a threesome if you're not participating. Yeah. And if you want to be a cuck, then be a cuck. But like, you can't just let them fuck when you're not a cuck. Yeah. Um. Preach, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Go off. I don't know. Who let him cook? When I finished, who let him cook? He reached and hugged me. I will never forget the first thing he said. Why did you do this to us? Uh, uh, oh my God. Uh. He stayed calm throughout the whole conversation, but he said he was very angry. He said that I should have never shared anything private between us with anyone. Apart from the motivation of the threesome, he said that it was so wrong to lead to him to believe that I was enjoying it. Agreed. Can you repeat that? Apart from the motivation of the threesome, he said that it was so wrong to lead him to believe oh. that I was enjoying it. Gotcha. He said he didn't like it on a deeper level because he is strictly monogamous and he thinks he would uh, would only be happy if he could devote himself to someone who could devote him, herself to him. Mm. He thought I was one of those people who liked to share their significant with others, significant other with others. And at that moment, he was convinced that we wouldn't work in the long term. This was a huge disappointment for him. He added that sex is good for him only when his partner enjoys it. He even called it some kind of fetish. Uh, he isn't interested in or gets off by I, anything that I wouldn't enjoy, period. I can only come if I'm making my partner come. That's the only way. <laughs> my kink is consent. <laughs> He told these with a very he told me this with a very calm voice while holding me in his arms while I cried my eyes out. He added that we would need time to recover, but we would be fine and that he loved me very much. He proceeded to get his phone to text Michelle. It was strange that he didn't ask me to do it. He texted her a simple and formal, hey, Michelle, got to say this really quick. I'm not comfortable anymore with the unspoken agreement we have. I hope you understand. He also told me that he was okay with me seeing my friends, but he didn't want to contact them, especially Michelle for a while. He also told me to never share our private matters with anyone. So that was that. After months, I can say we are still fully, we aren't, I can't say we are still fully on track yet, but things are getting better. <sighs> right. Is that Ooh. the end? I uh, came clean to my boyfriend. He was angry, but willing to forgive. He unilaterally ended it with Michelle and went no contact with my friends for the foreseeable future. 
The relationship is doomed. It's a ticking time bomb. You're never going to get past this. Just break Your up. relationship with Michelle is definitely done. Yeah. How can you yeah. be in that friend group? Yeah. How would a real friend <laughs> even accept that offer? For real. I do think that's the wildest like, part. Like, it's not... Like, they were full-fledged adults. They were 25 years old. Like, mm-hmm. it's not like you're fucking 17 being like, no, yeah, this will work out. Like, God, it's so it's so naive and, like, so silly to do and continue to do. And, like, the guy is getting off a little scot-free here, I feel like. Like, I think he's a little bit culpable, but yeah, what a bad situation. God. Very uncomfy. Very, Very uncomfy. I just... I can't get over the fact that, like, how does it happen, like, five times before, I don't know. I, hey, fuck I'd my girlfriend, some... fuck my boyfriend once, shame on you. Fuck my boyfriend twice, shame on you. Fuck my boyfriend five times, shame on me. I'm hey, a, I fucked up. That's an old... <laughs> that's the old saying. It's the old, old proverb, right? Is that in Proverbs? Chapter 3? Yeah. Verse 15? <laughs> for, for the Lord so loved the world that he let... Someone fuck his wife five times. Mm. John. Jo- I thought it was in Proverbs. John 3.16. I'm going to lose it. I just don't know how you don't communicate it at all. And like you said, it's like, how does the boyfriend, like, you you have to be just playing dumb at that point, right? The line of, I thought you were just one of those people that like sharing, and I guess our relationship was over, so I may as well have fun. It's like, well, what is that? I don't know. I guess you should have had that conversation with your girlfriend. Yeah. But Before I guess you yeah. guys did anything. Yeah. It does seem from the story that he did try to communicate actively throughout every other part of the relationship. So maybe, yeah, maybe it's not in there out. enough. Yeah. But because it's like even during sex, he's like trying to communicate. It's like, hey, we don't need to be talking right now. Let's be fucking. I, I heard what you're doing to Michelle in there. Okay. <laughs> I just want to know how their sex life was after that. Uh, not like is she doing for a while? You think? No, no. I just well maybe, but like mm. after that first time with Michelle, I feel like they'd she'd probably be okay. Like, like that sucked. Okay, like whatever. Mm. But the more that Michelle came over, I feel like if I was her, I wouldn't be able to do it. I'd be like, hey, well, I can't compete, so yeah. I'm not even gonna. I feel so in- inferior. Yeah. yeah, so messy. Such a sticky situation. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you guys are just yeah. young. Just break up. Sorry. That's it. Break up. You ready for the next one? We gotta hit a break. Okay. Let's hit that break. <clears throat> and we're back. Real <clears throat> short one on this side of the break. Am in? I reading this really quick story and then doing the circle judge and listener submission and then another story, or am I going straight to our regular Scheduled bullshit? program? Whatever you want, Erica. Okay, well, I'm going to read this one. R slash confession. Chomping at the bit. R slash confession. Hmm. Huh, weird. What's that, number three? <laughs> that one had an update, so technically it's three now. <laughs> I read my roommate's diary all year, and then I stole it when we moved out. <laughs> You live with a 10-year-old? <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> it's like somebody's diary. In 2019, I got into college and started my first year with a random roommate. She was really rude to me, despite always trying to be a good roommate, and I would always clean the room, take out the trash, etc., but she was always an asshole. I wanted to know why, so I dug around like the third week, and I found her diary. I started taking photos of it when she was in class, and I would That's read it. That's crazy. I would make sure to put it back exactly like it was, and I never used it in our arguments. I kept that shit hidden from everyone, even my friends. So what's the point? Just to be a little sick little freak? Oh, long game, baby. I did this consistently every other day or two for so, two semesters. So much. And it was so addicting, I couldn't stop. The I learned rush. so much about her and how she's mentally unwell, but she hides it really well. I couldn't help it. It was just so intriguing. Do you think if you had a diary, you'd be talking about your mental health issues? I don't yes. think be... That's what a diary is for. What? It's to like yeah. help process emotions. You never had a diary, no, did you? No, I never had How a diary. And I think anyone that has one past, I don't know, eighth grade is a fucking weirdo. So, Okay. <laughs> Twelfth grade? I'll keep mine hidden then. Cut to Erica diarying every, uh, diarying every day. <laughs> 
<laughs> journaling hey. every day. The Eric year is diarying and I'm diarying <laughs> uh, in the other room, okay? I think if you diarrhea past the age of eight, you're a fucking freak. I think the both of you are assholes. But also, what? I'm on your side. Uh, d- d- like with journaling, it's like you're not going to write like typically you're not going to have to process like super happy, positive emotions. So it's going to. Also, real quick, I fucking wrote a love letter to you in a journal every single day for a whole entire year before our wedding. You I... didn't think I was a childish idiot then. I said that already. Well, I'm bringing it up now. <laughs> Do you feel bad now? There's no defense I can have here, so I, we you can just go back to reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the doghouse. I don't need to. <laughs> it, you're not going to write like only like you're going to have more negative stuff, I imagine, in a journal than like a positive thing because you need to process those emotions differently. So I feel like a lot of people's journals are going to read pretty negative. Then COVID hit and I just wanted to keep I just wanted a keepsake. And when she was moving her shit out, I was Perfect about to keepsake. get in my car and leave and I went in and made the intrusive decision to steal it. I put it in my pants and my shirt over it, and I left. You're a bad person. Yeah. That is not a keepsake. That is somebody's fucking journal. Yeah. Yeah. She never texted me about it or anything, never posted about it, nothing. Absolute silence. She had quite a few people who didn't like her, and her friends and boyfriend were really weird, too. I legitimately think that she doesn't know that it's me. Probably not. Yeah, why would she assume... Uh- what a weird thing to like. She, yeah, nobody, nobody normal would do that. <laughs> she had such a huge falling out with one of her friends, and I really think it was because she thought that that girl stole it. You're a bad person. I know this is absolutely terrible, but no, no buts here. I still have the book, and it's been so long. It's just at my parents' house. I know this was absolutely terrible for me to do, and that's why it's in my confessions. I have dreams of her finding out it was uh, finding out it was me and us arguing to this day. Man, was her shit fucked up though. I'll never be able to see into someone's life like that again in real time updates. This person needs a fucking mirror. You are so fucked up. Yeah, that, you are dreaming about confrontation. Yeah. Well, that's stress dreams. It's because she's been cursed. <laughs> you had pictures of all of the pages. You didn't need the physical book. It's not the same. Have you ever tried reading on a Kindle versus a real book, Josh? Yeah, I'm on your side. <laughs> it doesn't again. have the, the same smell. <laughs> Where's the tactile <laughs> feedback for What's me? What's that? Was it a John Mulaney skit or skit when in one of his stand-ups where he talks about he went to that party in college or whatever, yeah. and the dude was stealing like family heirlooms, family pictures. pictures. Yeah, because yeah. he can't replace same, those. It's the same fucking thing. To call that a keepsake so nonchalant? That's disgusting. It's insane. That is genuinely like serial killer behavior but here's the here's the thing bad person the rush you get from reading somebody's oh, diary i mean it's gotta be immaculate i've also, never done that you know my mom used to read my diary when i was a little kid i feel like there definitely is a little bit of a barrier where it's like parents maybe sometimes need to rarely no but on very fringe circumstances and that should be a place for the kid to have like privacy yeah mom yeah mom. well he should have asked for one of the super safe lock diaries oh. from the school magazine fair well i haven't had one since i was eight so oh okay <laughs> all right so that was <laughs> late bloomer for getting rid of your diary <laughs> you got soft diaries brother <laughs> are you ready for the circle george oh shit circle george you guys have one, right? I might kill myself. Well, this week's Circle <laughs> Jerk is... Uh, I'm about to do something dire. <laughs> me trying to talk myself out of the doghouse. The love letters were cute. <laughs> Keeping track of your day-to-day <laughs> goings is weird. That's not a you don't, you just don't You're making the, it you worse. You say that's not a diary, but guess what? <laughs> little, a little person named whatever the fuck that Supreme Court judge was that got accused of all sorts of shit, and he's like... Oh, it's so crazy. I have a diary that has my day to day. And they're like, and it's just him being like, I went to Brett's today and we played the devil's triangle. Yeah, but he's a fucking weirdo. Yeah. That's not the norm. I'm no. There is a certain point where you stop using a diary for writing down like, this is what's upsetting me to being like, this is what I did today. And like keeping track of your personal history. You're a fucking weirdo. And there's a certain age gap here. I don't, I can't put the exact date on this when it becomes a weirdo thing for you to do. 
Have you ever owned a diary? No. So why are you speaking on it? Correct. <laughs> I know you're doing a bit, but you're... <laughs> You're digging yourself. You guys a hole. are weirdos. <laughs> Dream journal? I'll let it slide. <laughs> that is a great transition into the circle jerk. Ooh. So I had a dream last night. Ooh. That I was in a conversation with somebody, I don't remember who it was. And I asked this question to the person. And then my like the conscious part of my dreaming brain was like, that would make a really good circle jerk discussion. You should remember this. Okay. And then, you know, I went about my dream business. I don't even remember what Flying, happened. Fucking, Killing zombies. Sucking, tornado, teeth falling out. Doing a 69er. Scared that the person's diary that you sold is coming to find you. Not that one. The rest of it, pretty <laughs> accurate. Um, <laughs> so then I texted it to Heather this morning so that I didn't, like, forget. So. Perfect. If you were out in public. Okay. Okay. And you see someone that you know. <sighs> They're with someone else I that you it. don't know. Okay. The person you know leans over to that other person they're with and whispers something to them mm-hmm. while looking at you. Okay. I'm so crushed. you know I'm crumbling. that they're talking about you. Yeah. Would you rather this person that's hearing this whisper, would you rather that they gasp in reaction, like <laughs> shocked and judging you? Or laugh after hearing what they heard. Interesting. I feel like I could sleep better on a laugh. I feel like the same. Really? Yeah. See, I I mean, I've brought this up. I don't know if I brought it up on the podcast or just streams. I use talking about my own embarrassing situations as a defense mechanism. So it's like, if I make myself the butt of the joke, hey, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Sure. So if okay. they're laughing at me, it's like, oh, I mean, it's, I do stupid stuff all the time. But if they're like, <gasps> I'm like, what did I do? And yeah. what are they talking about me? See, I feel the opposite. I think I would rather them know that I'm crazy or I did something scandalous than, than be made fun of. Mm. Really? Yeah. I just think I could talk myself into like, I can talk myself into a laugh being a positive thing more than a gasp a positive thing. I think I could be like, oh, that's the guy in high school who like did that really funny thing. Or like, oh, that guy has a podcast and that's where we get uh, uh, Piss Baby from. And they'd be like, ha, 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 ha. But like if it was like, that guy has a podcast. Oh, like I can't, I can't live with that. In my head, <laughs> the gasp also came from them mentioning that we had a podcast. Like they have a really successful podcast and be like, oh. No, it's a judging gasp, though. It's a judging gasp. You had it in there as a judging gasp? It's implied that both reactions would make you feel negatively. Right, but I could, in my brain, spin that laugh to positive better. Hmm. I, in my brain, see a person I know. How how well do I know them? It's like somebody in my past, or it's like somebody I talk to frequently. You just know this person. Then I don't know them. If I'm in Walmart... (laughs) I don't it's, know him. Oh, man. Now that we're putting a name on it, <laughs> a gasp might hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. I mean, neither of them are ideal. Yeah. What, what reaction would you want? Like, a, oh, like that's what you would want. Yeah. Um, or neutral. Just feel like, mm. ah, Neutral might be worse. Nah. If somebody learned a piece of information about me and nothing changed about their face, I'd be like, that's weird. Give what me positive they, or negative. What if they give, give you like something. a... <laughs> no way. <laughs> and then something incredulous. That's sh- that I include that. That's shocked. A gasp. But like okay. that's ne- that wasn't as negative. That was more of a positive no way. I want like a, a hard to parse which emotion I'm getting from it. No way. Hmm. I want to be like, oh, if you look at it from this way, it's a duck. But if you look at it from this way, it's a rabbit. It's an old lady. Maybe like a, you're kidding. Like one of those. Oh. <laughs> mm, <mm-mm>. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what, what do you mean you're kidding? What is he kidding about? <laughs> I don't like that one. What actually. did you say about yeah, it? No, I want the laugh. I would rather them be laughing at me. For real? <laughs> yeah, the more we're doing this, the more I'm like, please mock me, point at me and laugh, please. Or him? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Her? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, bitch, it's me. So, yeah, I dreamt about that. Who was it that was doing it? Saying it. I just told you in my dream I don't remember. Oh, sorry. 
I don't thought remember. maybe it was for the show. Oh. <laughs> make up a make up a name who it could have been. All I can think about is my mom. <laughs> oh my god, if your mom whispered something to somebody else and they went <gasps> I would be fucking devastated. I read her diary. She was six. <laughs> she called me a bitch. <laughs> <She> said, <laughs> <laughs> I spelled it something really stupid. B I T H or something like that. <laughs> stupid bith. It's enough to understand <laughs> what you were trying to say. Yeah. All right. That was a good circle jerk, Erica. Was it? Honest opinions? Yes. What was your circle jerk last week? Um, It was sent in by a listener. Do you want that one too? No, I was just curious because. You said you had one last week, and I was expecting that one this week. Yeah, I still have it. You don't have to. I was just. Well, then she had a I was trying to call a block. Came to her in a dream. And I, was I was trying, trying to call a block. Another dream. So. And it had it's it's back. Oh my god! <laughs> what I, if I, I gasp can, and laugh at the <laughs> same time? <laughs> we have microphones. Can you believe that he shit his pants? <laughs> you distracted me. I was going to throw a carrot at him, well, but now I can't right. remember why. N- not important. Can you believe he had a diary until he was 14? <laughs> you were out of the doghouse for a split wait. second because I forgot about it? <laughs> no, wait. Christian's on to something because the only person who I know who has a diary is a wimpy kid. Roderick. Oh, and Jane. And Jane. Okay. Good one, Joshua. Cool people have notebooks. What about Anne Frank? Rip, hmm. rip a real one. 14. Hmm. <laughs> a lot of credence here to my statement. Also... Did Aunt, did Anne Frank's did Anne Frank's parents die? I think yeah. in the Dad Holocaust. Survived. Cause what? Because it's her dad who like I'm pretty sure her dad survived. Read it. through the journal and like uh, commoditized it, right? Pretty sure. I but he, he, didn't you know read what? It. Yeah, because the men would normally get sent to different work camps than the women, so and the kids, so yeah. I never made it to the end of the book. <laughs> I never. Read I'm not it. even kidding. Seriously? Yeah, I never. Like I know she dies, but I know ne- I don't know well, how it's not, the diary. She didn't ends. write in her diary that she died, and I died. <laughs> That's not how it ends. <laughs> I just I don't know how it ends. I mean, the hol- the war is won, I believe. I be- I think it ends. Uh, I might be mixing up with four perfect pebbles. I can't. I get. I don't remember the difference between the two. I have a signed copy of Four Perfect Pebbles by the person who wrote it and survived the Holocaust and her husband. Was there a really old lady who came and gave a talk at the school? Yeah. I think I remember well, going to I'm it. not funny, so I don't have a good listener to submit sound. Um, I just want to say, love the pod. And if you recognize my voice because you know me, you owe me 20 bucks. Please, send me $20. That'd be great. Fuck. Are we supposed to recognize them or are their friends supposed to recognize them? Don't say my name. It'll ruin the bit, but you can say the name I use on Discord. Love, Vlad. Uh-huh. So if another person listening to this recognizes the voice they owe him 20 bucks, fuck, I'm going to feel real bad if I don't know who Vlad... I'm going to feel real Vlad about it. We Well, we don't know who Vlad is, otherwise we'd owe Vlad $20. Okay, now I got to remember if, which... Vlad, if I know who you are, out in public at a Walmart? No, I don't. Do you guys not do that when you see people that you know and you're just like, you you do everything in your brain to wash your face of any kind of emotion like you might know them? Every time, anytime I see anybody in public, I yeah. immediately pretend like I don't know who they are. Even me. He's done it to me before. Yeah, I go, uh, who are you? I don't think that's false. <laughs> and then the moment they walk by, I go, I worked that with that person, Erica. <laughs> It's true. He's he does that on the reg. I a lot of the times I will not say hi to them until he's hi to me because I'm just like oh, I don't know who you are. You're not in scrubs. I don't know who you are. I just pretend like they don't recognize me, and then I then I leave and I go. I, uh, they didn't recognize me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what the Jeez. fuck? They didn't recognize me. Anyway, hey Rick, hey girl, hey. I sent this story into the Gmail, but I felt very Erica coded, so I wanted to make sure that you could read it too. No pressure, of course. I just know you enjoy family drama. Much love. Doesn't say if I can use her name. Come on. Just kidding. It says, please don't use my name if you read this on the pod. Right at the top for you. You're welcome. Thanks, Brayden. Thanks, Brayden. My name is... Brayden. Mm. Guy, girl. Brayden. Female. Liana. <sighs> okay. My name is Liana, and I'm a longtime listener, but first time submitter. This story involves me, my parents, and a joke that fell flat. I do not think that I'm in the wrong here, but my family seems to disagree. 
So I'm curious to see what you think, especially you, Erica. Especially hey. you, Erica. Culture draft in any way. Oh, are you laughing? Fuck off. I couldn't hear. The incident happened about one year ago. I, she, her, 20 female, am a college student who lives at home during the summer. I share the house with my mom and dad, both 50, and a teenage little brother, 17 male. My house is small, but pretty comfortable for all of us, except that we share one bathroom. The amount of flights, sorry, the amount of fights ending with me peeing in the backyard are a story for another time. What? Sorry, I just got back in. (laughs) Because they only have the one bathroom. Insane to have to pee in your backyard. I feel like I can hold a pee better than a poop. We can go past that. Don't worry. With the layout of my house, the hallway containing the bathroom is only a few steps away from the living room, separated by one wall. This is where the incident began. One afternoon, I claimed the bathroom to take a quick shower. I usually bring my phone with me to listen to music, but this time I didn't. After finishing my shower and drying off, I realized that I left it in our living room where my mom and dad were watching TV. Wrapping myself in a towel, I quickly poked in to grab my phone, not giving it much of a second thought. After all, I was completely covered and would only be in there for a second, but that's when it happened. As soon as I rounded the corner, my dad whistled at me like men do when they catcall women on the streets. Yo, (sighs) that's gross. That feels bad to hear. Mission failed. Oh. Next time. Clutching the towel close to my chest, I stared back at him, immediately feeling far too exposed. He laughed a little bit as his oh. joke. Oh, he meant to do it to his daughter. Which admittedly he had done since me and my brother were little, but I decided this was a great time to practice some boundary setting. That's not funny, I said, unamused to my father. Oh. He immediately flew to the defense, saying, sorry, probably defense. Right? Immediately flew to defense instead of defense. I I feel like flew to defense is still improper grammar. Flew to the defense. It it is the defense. Anyway. Defense then. What are we arguing? I'm. If I say defense instead of defense. I think it's flew to the defense. Like, but I think it's supposed to be flew to the defensive. I think the word is incorrect here. Flew into the defensive, saying that he was only joking and that he didn't mean anything by it. I stood my ground, told him it made me feel uncomfortable, and retreated to my bedroom to put some clothes on. Honestly, I just texted my boyfriend and forgot about the whole thing until a few hours later. Okay. I was getting ready to leave the house when my mom pulled me aside privately. She told me, you hurt your dad's feelings earlier. Oh, bad mom. And you should apologize for making him feel bad. He was only trying to make you laugh. I respectfully refused. I told her that I'm allowed to not find a joke funny, even if I knew he meant nothing by it. I'm an adult now, and I should be able to call him out for crossing a boundary. Is this how you guys feel when I complain that you don't laugh at my jokes? No. (laughs) (laughs) She she seemed slightly miffed, but she dropped the subject as I walked out the door. British. We never really talked about this incident again, but this was the first time, this wasn't the first time my dad made a joke that I negatively reacted to, causing a confrontation. Still, I love both my parents dearly, and I wanted to, I want to maintain a healthy relationship with them. While I think that should include setting boundaries, I can't help but feel a little guilty. On one hand, I'm an adult now, not a toddler, so I don't appreciate my dad making joking comments about my body. Yeah. On the other hand, I know he's just trying to make me laugh. I don't mean to villainize him or make him feel stupid. Just make him respect my feelings. So am I the asshole for not laughing at my dad's joke? I won't be living at home for, for too much longer. So should I just smile and nod to avoid avoid creating conflict? Thanks for reading. Love you guys. I'm sorry this is a bit long. It wasn't. Hugs and pisses. Redacted. What was her name? Liana. Liana, a.k.a. her real name. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> it sounds like a dad who hasn't grasped that their kid has grown up yet and has agency. Yeah. But it's insane that he didn't realize his immediate error and then the wife also not, like the mom not yeah. immediately being on the daughter's side to be like, yeah, maybe don't sexualize your daughter, you fucking weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like this isn't a big enough thing to have like a long lasting, like, issue with your relationship with your parents sure but it is 
a big enough thing to be like, hey, I didn't like that joke. You no one wants to feel uncomfortable in their own house, Correct. let alone from their own family members. And Correct. so, like, you're perfectly justified in your feelings about this. The fact that he's taking it harder than she is is yeah. a very big sign that the dad is maybe a little too caught up. I think we need to send this story into Bluey, and they can probably make a really good episode and <laughs> settle this better than we ever could. Probably. Josh, I, start watching Bluey. I really... No. How about we get on Blue Sky? Blue Ski, is what I like to call it. Uh, I really thought the story was... I don't know what that is. New Twitter. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I really thought it was going to be that he thought he was whistling at his wife. Yeah. In- insane to whistle at a, at a child. I do yeah. want to know what the other... Because she mentioned that there was another time he made a joke that she had like a negative response to. And I want to know if that was another like creepy one or just like a flop dad joke. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like maybe it had uh, like racist... Calling mm. someone like gay. I feel yeah. Like. Mm. It's like, ah, it's not that We're funny. using the R dad. word. Bro, somebody did that at work like the other week, and I was shocked. It has been so long since I've heard somebody just like call something that, and I was like, what? <laughs> My I- sister still uses it every once in a while, and I'm like, we don't use that word. There's a some, there's somebody who I fucking hate their content on TikTok. They're a comedian. Christian knows I don't like him. He was defending him earlier today. <laughs> but he did a sketch. They did a sketch where like, his character as a bit was saying the R word a ton. And it's like, it feels weird that like you're doing that as like a bit. Like, I understand that you're making fun of this character who is saying the R word a ton. It still feels, feels like an excuse for you to just say the R word in a yeah. sketch yeah. for 12 year old people on TikTok to be like, oh, so funny. Hey, I can't defend that one. <laughs> Are you ready for a semi long? A s- Semi long? 16 wheels? An 18 wheeler length? This one lost two wheels. (laughs) This is from r slash entitled parents. Oh, another confession one, Erica. (laughs) Ooh. It's not a confession Where do we think entitled parents would fall in a draft scenario? Relationships? Rest of Reddit? You think so? Yeah. It would definitely be somewhere between relationships and rest of Reddit. Yeah. Half point to each. Which one do I have? Neither? I have both. (laughs) I think they're... (laughs) It's a zero. <laughs> the guy both of them. Uh, the title is You Can't Work Here If You're Pregnant. A woman, Karen, comes in with what I'm assuming was her husband and son and daughter and asks to be seated for lunch. We're not really a restaurant. It's a bar and grill. Uh, but we do have that small... That means you're a restaurant, though, right? If you're a bar and grill, that's what the grill implies? Well, if they were a restaurant, they'd be a grill and bar. Uh, We do have small apps and sandwiches and wings and stuff. I give them menus and Karen says, but wait, do you work here? Yep. But you're pregnant. You can't work here if you're pregnant. (laughs) I work here. I don't drink here. I say with a laugh trying to keep the mood light. But if you're a bartender, you have to legally, you have to do a shot with me if I say I want to do a shot. The woman looks me over and says, have you taken any prenatal courses? Do you really think that's responsible to have your unborn baby in here? This is where I made an error. I get defensive about anyone asserting that I'm going to be a bad mother, obviously. So I said, well, you've brought your kids in here. And what kind of example do you think you're setting for them? Great retort. Absolutely nailed her. Got her ass. I'm still collecting my thoughts at this point, and they grunt and wave me away. I figure I can kiss my tip goodbye, but hopefully that'll be the end of uh, end of the discussion. Um, I see them flagging down a bartender after a few minutes, and I figure that they're ready, uh, so I go over there. Karen asks to speak to a manager. Now, they haven't even gotten drinks yet, so nothing above my abilities could really be wrong. I just ask if there's anything that I can help them with, and her husband, Mr. Karen, says really sternly no just a manager didn't you hear my wife okay sounds like a delightful people to be around the place is too small for a manager it's just servers and bartenders and two co-owners the one who's working is in the back on a phone call and will be very upset if i go bother her i realize they're probably still uncomfortable with my my being pregnant so i say maybe ella the other server can help you but Karen just gets up physically and starts looking for the manager. I admit defeat. 
and go back to drag her off of her call. The owner tried not to let on how mad she was about being disrupted and goes over with a big smile to ask if there's anything she can help them with. You're the owner of the restaurant. You can deal with the fucking situation that's currently occurring. Part of your job is being an owner of a restaurant? It's Yeah. <laughs> Karen informs her as though it's urgent breaking news. Your server is pregnant. Owner says <laughs> she's aware and asks if they'd prefer a different server. Karen, no, no, no. She can't be a drink girl if she's pregnant. That's child abuce. She can't be a drink girl. Does mm -hmm. you think you can get like secondhand drunk? Mm -hmm. It'll just, absorb just through your hands, Josh. Just wait. Okay, it will absorb through your hands. That's a very good point. The owner says, I assure you, none of our employees drink on the clock, especially not our pregnant ones. If you'd prefer, I can have Ella serve you. Mr. Karen, I don't want my kids seeing this. Owner, maybe I'm missing something. Seeing what exactly? Mr. Karen, talking really slowly and condescendingly. Perfect. A pregnant woman around all this alcohol. Me? I don't know what you're insinuating, but I would never drink while pregnant. Karen says, look, honey, didn't you take a health class in junior high? With a drink right under you half the time, alcohol vapor is absorbed into your blood through the air, and that blood goes into the fetus and poisons it. Excuse me? Yeah, dude. Owner and I- You don't know this about alcohol? That you can just hover above it and get fucked up? Uh, owner and I exchange a look, and we realize we won't get anywhere with her. Owner says, so we can have Ella serve you, or I'm afraid there's not much else we can do. Mr. Karen, we're not leaving until she's placed on maternity leave, or better yet, fired. Who okay. is this? Hey. Oh, this is... No, this... they're pro-maternity leave. <laughs> <laughs> this is undercover boss situation. <laughs> that would be epic. It's the other co-owner in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> Owner says, we can't help you. Mr. Karen says, I'll call the police. You're an accomplice to child abuse. Okay, great. This is where I wanted it to go. <laughs> Owner says, there is no child abuse to speak of, sir. You need to leave. Boy, are they going to be upset when they learn that the police are there to defend the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> Karen starts to cry. You may not think a fetus is a child, but I was taught to believe that life begins at conception and I will stand up for mm. all living things, big and small, because that is what my Lord and Savior wants me to do. Mm, bring Jesus into it. This entire time she's delivering this tearful, tearful speech, she's looking around expecting others to <laughs> join in with her, applaud. Everyone just stands up. <laughs> Owner says... Get this pregnant lady maternity leave. Owner says, you're disturbing my customers, and if you don't leave, then you're considered trespassing, and I'll have to escalate this, which I really don't want to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Karen says, Jesus is love, and Jesus said, this is not okay. Just because you think it's okay to abuse a child if it's small enough. Jesus' blood is literally alcohol. <laughs> yeah. This is an Irish pub, and the owners are devout Catholics, so the owner wasn't having any of this. The owner says, hey. I don't need anyone to tell me what Jesus said. If there was abuse here, I'd have acted to stop it, but there isn't any. So I need you to leave. Mr. Karen, I'm calling the police. Owner says you do that. We just stop trying to service their table as we wait for the cops to arrive. Karen keeps trying to give her sermon, but there was a game on that people had actually come to watch and eventually everyone yelled at her until she piped down. Sports oh fixes my God. all. Maybe sports ain't that bad. Could have been a volleyball game. I I do have to say, if I was in a bar and grill, and us as uh, an establishment all gather to yell at one patron, I'm on board. I'm getting behind <laughs> that. Especially some pro-life bigot. My morals go out the window. If I get to scream at someone yeah. in a restaurant, <laughs> I am pro that. Uh, here come two, it says awesome officers. Mm, we're just going to say officers. <laughs> Awful officers. Police are here. We received a call. Is there a Mr. Karen? Right here, officers. You said you were witnessing child abuse. Are the parties involved still here? They point at me. I pretend to not notice because I'm worried the officers will take them outside and I won't be able to watch any more fireworks. Officer two. So what exactly is going on? That woman was drinking. She's pregnant. You can plainly see that she's very pregnant. 
Before I can go over to tell them that she's lying about my drinking, the officer looks at each other and back at the Karen family and officer says, that's not illegal. What? Oh, is this like way back when in past judges history when we found out that you can legally drink like a glass of wine as a pregnant woman? Yeah. It's definitely not recommended, but it's not illegal. Do you know the woman? Is she a friend of yours or family? She works here in a bar and she's pregnant. Mr. Karen says that he wants to see this place's liquor license revoked. Yeah. They're not serving anybody illegally. They were using a fake ID the whole time. I'm afraid you're going to... You're... Mr. Karen, you're gonna BAFTA leave. <laughs> is it BAFTA? The acting award? Beer and... Act, isn't that the, the, the like... Bassett. What's BAFTA? It's, it's an, an award. acting award. British. And I... Seen. I knew it the whole time. I'm BAFTA awarded. <laughs> Boo. The officers tell the Karen party that they need to leave. Mr. Karen says, this is a public... Sp- a public place that I have every right to be here if I want to. That's not how that works. Literally definition nope, of private. It's a private business and the business owners have asked you to leave. Sounds more, sounds like more than once. Uh, this is a disgrace. This is an affront to, to scripture and child safety. Mm-hmm. All this other shit. Mr. Karen. Mr. Karen says, I'll be contacting the authorities about your liquor license. You were talking to the authorities. <laughs> I happen to be close personal friends with the mayor. Ooh. And you too, I want your badge numbers. Don't think we're done here because we haven't even started. I'm a little bit on their side now. <laughs> Asking for badge numbers is cool. They did take the complaint to the liquor authority claiming among many things that we served minors. We can't prove it was them, but pretty sure it was them. We were investigated, but obviously came up fine. Um, boss asked me to hold off sharing the story with anyone until the matter was settled, but now that it has... We're sharing. Insane. We're sharing. Who would box them? I guess technically they were entitled parents, but I don't think that's the, what the, the nature moral. of the of the subreddit is for. Um, it says that this was a crossover between this sub and r slash bad woman's anatomy. Okay, it's mm. slightly you can off of breathe both in of them. the yeah. alcohol vapors and that it somehow to gets them. to the fetus. Yeah. I mean, what did they like exclusively maybe drink at like those fucking uh, uh, hipster places where like they do all the like mocktails and like you have like the vapored beer or whatever the fuck? Remember when they're acting like that was going to be big for a while in 2010? You yeah. ever see anything about that? Mm-hmm. Vaporized vodka. Wait till they find out about beer brats. They're going to lose their shit. They're going to go fucking nutty. Or, you know, like a vodka sauce yeah. or fingernail polish yeah windshield washer fluid anything with alcohols in it they're gonna be like well i gotta keep it out of 50 oh. feet radius we're talking about the vapors still i was thinking of foods vapors. that you can consume that have alcohol yeah just anything that is alcohol adjacent like me at a party i guess good one joshua um we gotta clip the i guess that's a good one that's a good one <laughs> uh <laughs> When, Every single time I say it's like, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody said in a listener sound mm-hmm. when I was looking for him earlier, and it was a clip of me perfectly saying all of our social medias and our handle, mm-hmm. and they clipped it down so that we could add it to our soundboard so that I didn't have to say anything. Where? Point to where on the board we could put that. Which one? Which one's the least important one? Go ahead and click through all of them. Tell me which one we can kick out. I'm not liking the energy that you're giving off right now. You're hurting my feelings. So. (laughs) That sounds like Christian trying to defend his take on diaries. This? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Good one, Joshua. Erica. (laughs) Anyway, that's... that's (laughs) It's the end of this one, boys. So and I was where referring to us? the two of you. Oh. Thanks. The two of you boys. But and that's lady right also here. it for you boys, girls, and NBs. There it is. Listening at home or in church in or car. at work or in the car. <laughs> or okay, if we're too. listening to this at work. <laughs> if we're listening to this at church, that rocks. <laughs> 
the no. organist has listened to this in the background while they're playing a little, <laughs> little ditty. wings of the e- 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 wings of an eagle. Editor, make an organ cover of our theme song for the outro. <laughs> yeah, editor. So yeah, this is another Ricky classic. And what's Ricky classic? Uh, if you have opinions about diaries that you need to tell Christian, please send them to me and I will use them in our argument later. Um, <laughs> when I uh, go back and see this in two weeks, I'll use it in our second argument. Yes, because so. right. it will re-trigger me and I'll get mad again. Um, in the meantime, if you want to follow us on... I'm sorry, Joshua. Am I, am I doing it wrong? If you intro and outro the show, then I get to do the socials. No, fuck you. What is it? It's my job. It's your job and you're trying to outsource it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm trying to be more efficient, Joshua. You're all about efficiency. I'm all about, on this podcast, I'm about efficiency and I'm about character. And, re- and making all these little soundboard ditties, I've been anti-soundboard the whole time. Oh, bullshit. It just removes character. I think we this? should... I you think you should what? I think we should... Acapella every week. <laughs> you you still wanted the two and a half men song. No, I didn't. That's not the two and a half men song. Don't worry, be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy now. Christian, where can they find us on socials? You can find us on all platforms. Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, my diary, my diary, my diarrhea, Patreon. If you don't want to get any ads, but yeah, if you don't want ads, go to Patreon. If you maybe want to join our Discord, Discord's cool. You can meet people like Vlad. You can do that all that at Judges at Judges Pod. J U D G I E S P O D. Also, all linked in the description because. I down like in the doobly do, <laughs> we're YouTubers now. Down in the hey, down, go check the doobly do below. Remember You're, back when the um, title of the YouTube videos used to be up here? No, old fuck. Judges love you. That's pretty close. I I pursed my lips a little too hard. I, was a fraction off. No one say anything. Hugs and pisses. Bye. The judges love you. <laughs> <laughs>